You have probably seen a parametric equalizer, a DAW plugin, a fancy window which allows you to move dots which alter the frequency content of your sound. But what exactly is it? Well, a parametric equalizer is actually a series of parametric filters, each of which alters the sound in a different way. In this video, I'll discuss all types of parametric filters, what controls do they have, and how do they alter the sound. Hi everyone, my name is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you how to process sound using self-written software. In digital signal processing, there are lots of filter types, but in parametric EQs, there are only a few. In this short video, I will cover all seven types of parametric filters. The effect of each of them will be shown on the example of pink noise filtering. The unfiltered pink noise sounds like this. So let's start with our parametric filter types. The low pass filter attenuates all frequencies above the cutoff frequency. The cutoff frequency specifies the frequency at which filter attenuation is exactly minus 3 decibels relative to the unfiltered signal. Another parameter is resonance. Resonance lets you create a peak around the cutoff frequency in the amplitude response of the filter. The resonance parameter was probably the main factor behind the success of the Moog synthesizer filter section. We can additionally control how fast is the slope decaying above the cutoff frequency. Here is how the low pass filter sounds. In itself, the low pass filter is a powerful musical tool. The high pass filter works exactly as the low pass filter, except that it attenuates frequencies below the cutoff frequency, not above. It has exactly the same parameters as the low pass filter. High pass filters are usually used to remove undesired frequencies below 100 Hz. Here is how a high pass filter sounds. Milder versions of the low pass and high pass filters are high shelving and low shelving filters respectively. A high shelving filter lets us boost or attenuate frequencies above the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency specifies the frequency for which the filter's gain is exactly half of the shelf gain given in decibels. It may also be called the corner, cutoff or transition frequency. Apart from the crossover frequency and the shelf gain, we may also control the steepness or the width of the slope in the transition band. Here is how a high shelving filter sounds. A low shelving filter, as you might have guessed at this point, lets us manipulate the shelf below the crossover frequency. It has exactly the same parameters as the high shelving filter. Here is how a low shelving filter sounds. A 
bandpass filter passes through frequencies only in a certain range. It cannot additionally boost or attenuate them. The only two parameters that a bandpass filter has is the center frequency and the bandwidth or alternatively the Q, so quality factor parameter. Here's how a bandpass filter sounds. A notch filter, also called a band stop or band reject filter, does the opposite than the band pass filter. It attenuates completely frequencies in a certain frequency range. Again, its two parameters are the center frequency and the bandwidth. Here's how a notch filter sounds. The final parametric filter that is musically useful and my personal favorite is the peak filter, also called a peaking filter or a band filter. It lets us boost or attenuate a certain frequency range. Its parameters are the center frequency, the gain, and the relative bandwidth, the Q quality factor, so the ratio of the width of the frequency range to the center frequency. Here is how a band filter sounds. Okay, these were all seven types of musically useful parametric filters that, when arranged in a series in a cascade, make up a parametric equalizer. Over the next couple of videos, I will explain in detail how to design and implement each and every one of these filters. Do you want to be able to code your own parametric EQ plugin? then subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications in order to be notified as soon as the new videos are published. I have linked to a condensed summary of this video over at dwolfsound.com in the description below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and see you in the next one. Take care. A low shelving filter, as you might have guessed at this point, let us manipulate the shelf below the crossover frequency. <coughs>